We are now on track to surpass global warming tipping points of 1.5 degrees Celsius that will cause irreversible damage to our planet. Now, if I'm completely honest, I don't actually believe that that statement means that much to the likes of you and me. And in general, the conversation around global warming and climate change can feel so overwhelming and complex and so unrelatable to individuals that as a population, we aren't engaged in the mission of hitting net zero. Hands up how many of you have heard of the term net zero? Fantastic. Uh, Keep your hands up if you feel like you could come up on stage and define the term net zero for me. 87% of people in Britain have heard of the term of net zero. Yet due to lack of awareness and lack of education, I quote, people in Britain are clueless in the relative effectiveness of actions that they could take to cut carbon. And that cluelessness and confusion causes delay and whilst we are waiting for the world leaders to create the great strategy, we cannot sit here and let those strategies trickle down from the top, wasting years of action. Our children are being born into a world where their first breath of oxygen contains heavy metals and toxic components that leave over 500,000 babies to not live past their first month of life. And in general, over 5 million deaths a year are linked to climate change. You, me, we, us need to change from being passive and out of the conversation to active and in the conversation. That our current mission is so detached from day-to-day -day life and is so unrelatable and is missing such a huge opportunity to engage people by simply setting the wrong targets. Now, I'm here to rewrite our mission and rewrite our targets, a mission that engages every single one of us, a mission that raises our level of awareness and raises our level of education so we can feel part of the conversation and part of the solution, a mission that will allow us to not only live sustainably far beyond 2050, but it will raise a generation of environmental leaders. See, I believe our mission should be working towards a circular, waste-free world. A world where waste doesn't go to waste, it becomes an energy source for something or someone else. A system that can work sustainably forever. This should be our mission and this should be our target. And not only because of the impact in which hitting this target will create, but it's the engagement of people into the conversation. Now, currently in my world of sustainability, I feel that we sometimes forget who we're talking to. We do not need to inspire someone who is already on their sustainability journey. We need to inspire the people who may not ordinarily be in that conversation. This is where the true power is held. And I believe working towards a circular, waste-free world can harness that power. Now, we can achieve our new mission by using one of the main causes of those five million deaths as a tool to engage people. Every year, over one million people lose their lives linked to plastic pollution. And every aspect of our life is filled with plastics. Our shopping trolley is filled with plastics. Our kitchen and our bathroom is filled with plastics. Our blood and our lungs are now filled with plastics. But what if we could change the purpose and change the perception of plastics and use plastics in schools and businesses and communities to engage people into a new conversation to work towards our new target? In comparison to carbon emissions, plastics have this incredible relatability, the capability to connect both people and planet because in the simplest of terms, plastics are simple, they are visual, they are tangible, they're easy to understand and easy to explain. And because every aspect of our lives is filled with plastics, plastics hold this relatable power. And we need to use plastics as a stepping stone to work towards our, our new mission and then engage people into a wider conversation. But plastics aren't even one of the main topics of conversation at the top. 
Now, in November last year, we were very proud to be part of a number of events up in Glasgow at COP26. And as we sat there listening to the range of discussions and panels around global climate issues, we were waiting for the conversation around plastics to begin. But considering plastics are now found in our blood, they are linked to over a million lives lost every year, and also there's this huge carbon footprint attached to the whole life cycle of plastics, plastics weren't even mentioned in the whole 10 days of COP. Now, instead of a climate activist or a climate scientist or a politician, I'm standing here talking to you about this because I believe it can and it should also be you. Plastics can facilitate every single one of us to feel empowered that we all hold the potential to change the world. Now, the reason I believe this is because I am someone who has been empowered by plastics, because they're simple, because they're visual and they're tangible. July 2016, a moment that changed the trajectory of my life. I'd been living east for around two years at this point, and my partner, Rebecca, who has lived in and out of Asia for the last 10 years, said she was taking us to paradise. It was the island of Kolipe, and when we arrived, this place was incredible. White sanded beaches, blue crystal waters, long tail boats, palm trees. It was paradise until we ventured to the southern beaches on the island. And across the full length of the shoreline, there was hundreds and hundreds of kilos of plastics, from plastic, fl plastic flip-flops to plastic toothbrushes to football boots to fishing lines. Now, at this, po this point, I had never spoken on camera, quite frankly, never wanted to, but I felt so compelled about what I was seeing that I felt that this needed to be posted and shared online. I mean, looking back, it's the most cringeworthy video that I'll ever watch again. <laughs> But it was in that moment, without me knowing, it altered my path. Now, fast forward 18 months, and we're now working with hotel chains and travel companies to highlight and promote travel. Panag Sama Beach in the Philippines is one of the only places in the world where you can swim with billions and billions of sardines. And the area also gets an abundance of jellyfish. And as you may know, sea turtles eat jellyfish. So we're on the beach, and I put my drone up and this incredible moment begins to unfold. I get one sea turtle on my screen. I get two sea turtles on my screen. And then that elation very quickly turned to agony as I see this wave of plastic enter the screen. And then I see this sea turtle go to eat one of the plastic bags, which I can only presume mistaken it for a jellyfish. Now, by this time, I'd seen how plastic could have such destruction to our beautiful natural environment. And I'd seen how plastics could have such destruction to our beautiful marine life. But it's my final story which hits me the hardest and stays with me the most. We were working with a travel company in rural Cambodia and on this incredible, beautiful floating village. And when we arrived at the village, there was plastics absolutely everywhere. And at this point, we knew a lot more about plastics and different regions of the world and waste management systems. So it wasn't the pure volume of plastics that got to me. But it was this little kid called Adol. He was incredibly shy, um, but so inquisitive of me and Rebecca. And we, we were invited into the family home. And the conversation, the conversation around plastics started. And the family said that so plastics don't pollute the waterways, what they started to do as a village was to burn all the plastics. But what they soon found was the children in the village, including Adol, would get massive headaches and then random nosebleeds. And then, I mean, what a situation to be in. You've got no true disposal of waste. You don't have the bin men, so the only options are you discard it into the environment, polluting our planet, or you burn it to get rid of it negatively impacting the health of your children. And this goes back to the importance and the reasons behind working towards a circular, waste-free world. This should not be happening. Now, these moments in time have inspired us to work tirelessly to raise the awareness around plastic pollution and engage people into the conversation around climate change. And since these moments, we're extremely proud that we've stopped over 55,000 kilos of plastic toothbrushes entering commercial circulation in 53 countries. We've educated 
over 5,000 children on our environmental workshops and set up impact projects globally, including big community cleanups and beach cleanups and projects with an incredibly inspiring humanitarian aid charity and work with forward-thinking businesses and brands to raise that awareness around plastic pollution. And yet, this is just the start of the impact that we plan to make. And we plan to continue to use plastic pollution to engage people into a conversation. Now, due to the relatability of plastics, I don't think the fact that you can, it's tangible and it's visual, I don't think that you need this overwhelming light bulb moment to take action that positively impacts our planet. And I'm not the only one in which plastics have inspired us to actively change the world. Boy and Slap, age 16, created the idea behind the ocean cleanup when diving in Greece. The ocean cleanup is now on course of hitting their mission to remove 90% of ocean plastic by 2040. Malatai Wason, who founded Bye Bye Plastic Bags at the age of 12, with her little sister, to engage the whole island of Bali to ban plastic bags. Malate now leads the Global Change Makers Initiative to inspire young people to take action. Daniel Webb, founder of Everyday Plastic, who collected 100% of his plastic waste and plastic packaging in his flat for a full year. He's now working with Greenpeace to launch the UK's largest plastic investigation. Litter pit groups in communities and eco-committees at schools all the way down to individual actions like Frosty from Turn the Tide Cornwall, who engages people in the conversation around sustainability by simply talking and acting passionately about protecting his beautiful coastline. And this can be you. And this is the power that we've been completely ignoring. Because plastics are visual and tangible, and they and they provide this instant positive feedback to you when acting upon them, whether it's making plastic-free decisions at home or collecting litter on your, on your walk. Plastics empower people. And we need to use plastics to empower a population and then use that engagement to start a conversation about wider climate issues. Now, with the work that we deliver, we follow three ridiculously simple steps that we believe can create a wave of impact. Now, two of these steps are nothing special, nothing new. They're part of the majority of initiatives out there. But the third is the most important, which usually gets missed, and our current mission doesn't facilitate. One, educate. Ignorance is bliss until the topic directly impacts us. We need, all need to understand that Plastics are impacting us now. The fact that plastics are found in our blood and found in our lungs should scare the hell out of us on educating ourselves and understanding our consumption. Two, inspire. From what we have learned, that will, ins that will inspire us to take action. Whether that's one simple change in the bathroom or collecting litter on your walk or simply understanding and cutting down your consumption. Now, as I said, the first two are nothing special, nothing new. But the final one is vital for us to tilt that pendulum in the right direction. Three, empower. Because plastics are simple and tangible and they're easy to understand and in turn easy to explain, we need to empower ourselves to start a conversation with one more person and start that conversation about the importance and the reasons of working towards a circular, waste-free world. If we can encourage one person to take their first step on the ladder, who knows the, the impact that that individual will make? But if we can do this on a population level, by engaging people into the conversation and empowering them to feel part of the solution, which is tangible and relatable, then every single one of us will understand that we individually hold a huge responsibility and a huge role in making global positive change. Now, as the top strive for net zero targets, I believe it is our responsibility to work towards a circular, waste-free world. A mission that engages every single one of us. Now, one part of me 
believes that plastics may be one of the biggest silent killers of our generation. With the true effects of plastic found in our blood and found in our lungs not yet known. But the other part of me believes that if we can harness that relatable power to educate, inspire, and empower individuals, then our children will live in a circular, waste-free world, a world where materials are reused and repurposed and recycled, a world where we can live at one and symbiotically with the earth. But more importantly, if we can use and harness that relatable power of plastics as a population, then we will raise a generation of engaged environmental leaders that goes far beyond 2050. Thank you.